One of the quickest ways that you can graph a quadratic function is when it's written in standard form. And we're going to see why that is. So first of all, let's take a look at what standard form looks like. So in standard form, we have a, usually an x minus a number component. There's our squared. A number out front, and usually plus or minus some number on the end. So if we can take a quadratic and write it in this form, here's all of the information that we can just essentially read from looking at it. First of all, the values h and k will tell us exactly where the vertex is, the point hk. And then the number that is being multiplied out front, uh, a in the formula, this will tell us whether our quadratic has been stretched, shrunk, or even reflected. So, you know, the big idea behind this is really to maybe think of our original x squared. And to think of all of our quadratics as some sort of variation on this original function. So some things you want to know about just plain old x squared. Well, its vertex is usually at 0, 0. And it has some key points like at negative 1, 1, uh, negative 2, 4, stuff like that. So it's really taking this guy and then starting to stretch it, shrink it, or shift it to another spot. So that's all this formula is really trying to tell us to do. So we started with an x squared, we shifted it around to a new point, so its vertex is now at hk, and this a will stretch it, shrink it, flip it. Let's do a, a couple of quick examples so you can see this thing in action. So I want to graph f of x equals negative x plus 4 squared plus 5. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two values to figure out where my vertex is. Remember, when this is written in standard form, it's a minus h and a plus k. The reason why that's important is because it tells me that the value of h here must be a negative 4. So vertex, negative 4. This number on the end, that's just going to be the same, so 5. So the very first point I will put on my graph negative 4, 5. Negative 4, 5. So that is our vertex. Alright, now look out front. This is where that a value lives. It will give us information on stretching, shrinking, or reflections. You can tell a stretch uh, when the absolute value of the number is larger than 1. You can tell a shrink when the absolute value is uh, between 0 and 1. And right now, it looks like if I take the absolute value, yeah, I get exactly 1. So this one hasn't been stretched or shrunk in any way. The negative sign, however, tells me that it has been reflected. So normally the problem would go up, but because of that negative sign, it will go down. So I'm going to now put in a few key values. So let's see, normally this would be like 1, 1. Now I'm at 1, negative 1. Then 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can see I'm starting to build those uh, individual values. But after a while, I'll just go ahead and sketch it out. Let's say my parabola looks something like this. Kind of a rough sketch, but at least I know where the vertex is, I, and I know its general shape, facing down. Well, let's do this one more time just to make sure that we have the process. In this one, I want to graph f of x equals 1 half, x minus 6 squared plus 2. So again, let's think of finding that vertex first. It's going to come from the inside and the outside numbers here. So let's see, in the formula it's minus h, so 6 is our first value, and this number just as it is, so a positive 2. So the very first point on here at 6, 2, here is my vertex of my parabola. All right. Now let's look at the number out front. It looks like it's a one half. So the absolute value of one half is one half. It's between zero and one. So that's our clue that this has been shrunk. Well, the way I'll reflect or, or the way I'll represent this is, you know, rather than picking out my key values at like one one and two four, uh, I'm going to chop them all in half. So instead of being at 1, 1, now I'm at 1, 1 half. Instead of 2, 4, now I'm at 2, 2. 
instead of 3, 9, think of half of 9, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. So the effect is that it'll make this parabola look a little bit wider than normal. There we go. And I know it's facing up because notice how the one half is positive. All right, so now we can draw in those dots and we have a good idea as to what this parabola looks like. So as you can see, as long as it's written in standard form, you can use those two bits of information, the vertex and the A value, uh, so you can draw out your quadratic very quickly.